up guys, in this video I'm checking out the Functional Tennis Saber, which is a 37 square inch racket that is designed to be a training tool to help you focus on hitting the sweet spot of a racket more. Fabio at Functional Tennis has done an outstanding job in my opinion to the racket design, more specifically in terms of the quality, the paint and the finish are top notch to the touch. But more importantly, the composition is well designed and creates for a really fantastic playing experience. So if you're interested, you can use the link in the description if you want to help the channel out. I've had it for a couple months now and is one of my favorite rackets to have in my bag to warm up with or just to have some fun. So far everyone who has tested the racket loves the hit with it and personally I think it's much better than just the gimmick that it sets out to be, mainly because of the quality. Now obviously this is straying away from my regular racket reviews but I've been testing the Schiff 315, Pure Drive 98, Aero 98, the Unlock FX Tour and we'll hit with some of the Radicals and Pro Staff soon. And I'm starting to cut up all that footage now, I've just been pretty busy with work. Taking a quick look at the specs, it's a 37 square inch racket, 312 gram strung. It's designed with a 12 by 12 string pattern and comes with factory strings. The swing weight is around 270, but it's a full length racket so everything has proper dimensions for a great hitting experience. And just actually looking up and reading it now, it's layup includes carbon fiber and fiberglass, which probably explains why it has such good build quality. I did get a good number of hours with it with the factory strings before they finally broke because I was a little bit concerned about how long the strings would last but surprisingly they lasted quite a long time. And with my own stringing machine I had no issues restringing it, just adjusting the mounting clamps and I restrung it with Yonex Rexus at around 32 pounds which ended up playing even better with the racket. This racket has a really nice feel to it when you hit the sweet spot. Obviously if you end up making contact with the frame more often than the string bed, you will brunt the vibrations of the frame a bit more, but clean contact produces a comfortable and solid response. Also it may depend on what ball you use. If the ball is brand new and comes off a bit dense, it might feel a little stiff, so I would recommend playing with balls that are more worn in. Once I restrung it, having it at a low tension helps with the plushness and also makes it feel even nicer. As just with any other racket, by the time the factory strings get to you, it's lost a little bit of life in them. With that being said, I played with them from new until breaking and thought that they performed pretty decent for a synthetic gut. Personally wouldn't recommend a polished string in this, though I've heard people put it in, but I think you would want to keep this racket as plush as possible to get the overall best experience. Because of the head size, you don't need the extra control or the stiffness. For ground strikes, if you really break it down, the thing that the Sabre helps you most on is allowing you to focus on timing, spacing, positioning, racket head speed, and making sure that you have a more squared up face upon contact with the ball. One thing that particularly exposed my weakness on my forehand was relying on a larger sweet spot from rackets like my Gravity or Babolat frames to do the work for me. And this helps me dial and zone in on making flush contact in the middle more. For my backhand being a one-hander, the biggest problem for me was having good extension, spacing and timing. Once I was able to figure out my swing of the sabre and I focused more on making contact out in front of me with a fully extended arm, that's when I was able to achieve a much better hitting result. And these simple fundamentals can carry over to when you switch back to your normal racket. As long as you remember, concentrate and maintain focus. But I would like to say that it's not anywhere as hard as you think it might be to have to hit with this. If you know how to hit a ball in general, you'll find that a lot of people at any level will start adapting to this pretty fast and realize it's not as difficult as it looks. The only thing is I could hit quite well with it during a hit up, even moving side to side. But when it comes to playing points or a match, that's where things change a little bit and that forces you to really be on top of the ball and makes it a much more difficult thing to handle. For power, you'll be surprised how much power you can actually get from this. If you've ever hit with a smaller racket head, such as ProStar 85 or 90, you know that just because it's thin beamed and small doesn't make it absent of any power. If anything, due to the extra precision, you'll actually be able to laser beam through balls, penetrating through the court, especially with those classics that have a lot of weight to begin with. The only exception is that the Sabre is obviously extremely light. But still with flush contact, it still produces a stable and great feeling shot where you can actually notice some of the power come off quite well. Likewise with spin, you'll be shocked to find that this is actually capable of hitting top spin with good arc and a launch angle. And sure, it's not going to be some kind of spin machine, but to my surprise, you can create good margin and some high bouncing balls. If anything, when you miss hit and clip the side of the frame, it actually produces extra spin because you end up generating more power from the stiffer portion of the racket. But because it's more controlled and low powered, the ball will stay in and you'll just end up getting a high bouncing frame. 
for maneuverability, what makes this racket really fun to play with is that it's lightweight but still packs a punch with proper hitting, meaning you can swing it in any way which you want and focus solely on technique because you have full control of the racket head and can maneuver it and manipulate it in any way you need to. For slice, I found generally the hardest shot to consistently perform from the baseline since you have to tilt the racket face a little bit and get near perfect contact, otherwise you end up framing it or it drops short. For serving, to serve you probably need to speed up your swing and keep your ball toss low and efficient so you can eliminate as many variables as you can. You can actually blast them quite well. It also slices just fine on the sliders and like I mentioned with the spin, it's actually still possible to get a little bit of kick on it as well. On volleys, standing in one spot and doing volleys over and over is a bit more difficult, especially when I don't have the greatest technique, but I found it also really rewarding to do a finishing volley or a reaction volley in doubles or singles, which were more one-off shots. I actually did play some social double sets with this during a tennis competition and I actually played really well overall and I was actually able to maintain a decent hitting standard. For stability, you'll find that there's actually not that many problems as long as you hit the sweet spot because the sweet spot is so concentrated that as long as you meet the middle, it comes off really well. The difficulty is having to find that sweet spot no matter how high, how low or how far the ball is away from you and having to do it on the full run when you're trying to get to the ball and get into good position rather than just focusing on hitting the ball itself. For forgiveness, like I said, it's not really an extremely difficult racket to have a hit with and is actually a really fun experience. The only problem is when you're playing a full speed match, especially with someone who is around your level or higher, then you're going to have a lot of difficulties just because of the extra pressure of what it means to play a point and having to control the ball. And if you're an attacking player like me, trying to go for the lines or control the ball makes it a little bit more difficult. So you really just have to knuckle down and play the ball in instead and be more disciplined with all your shots. So the main thing this would help you with is not really the point of contact, but more so training your focus and concentration to be more disciplined at all times. For a small and self-managed company, Fabia is doing a fantastic job creating some fun and unique tennis equipment for all kinds of tennis fans alike. Starting off with the tennis pointer and then moving on by putting his hard work into developing the Sabre. With the time and effort and care that he gave to making a very high quality product, the Sabre is definitely something that's practical but also lots of fun. And for everyone who I've met who's seen it, they're not only intrigued with it by its design but even more wowed by its playing experience. So if you're interested in buying one, you can use my link in the description and doing so helps the channel continue to grow. They do ship worldwide and they've just restocked again right now but just know that they've sold out on multiple batches since they've launched. I hope the review was interesting and helpful to understand the product in a different way compared to the other videos out there. Appreciate your time. I'll be working on the Shift 315 review very soon so be on the lookout for that one. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.